Now the story of what happened when the one man who was holding his family together finally let go and the separate journeys that eventually gave them no choice but to come back together. It's Arrested Development. Fateful Consequences. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point, which is based on a blog of the same name and coincidentally is pronounced like Steve Holt says his name. Steve Holt! Steve. Couch Potatoes Unite! See? My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com, as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU, exclamation point, hopes you've been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays, as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays, and as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panelists and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are published once per week. Subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes to your radio and buy Google Play to stay on top of brand new episodes. Episodes already published discuss a variety of shows around the water cooler, including but not limited to The Good Place, Game of Thrones, Broad Church, Stranger Things, iZombie, The X Files, Marvel's Agents of Shield, Gotham, Schitt's Creek, New Girl, The Originals, Supernatural, The Crown, Once Upon a Time, and The Arrowverse on the CW. We've published several episodes in our Looking Back series covering such diverse shows as Sense8, Battle Creek, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, Marvel's Agent Carter, and Third Rock from the Sun. And we've looked back to look forward at shows like Will and & Grace and Gilmore Girls. Plus, new episodes are in the works, including revisits for 13 Reasons Why, Orange is the New Black, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Grace and Frankie, Fuller House, American Horror Story, Doctor Who, a series of unfortunate events, and the Marvel's Defenders panel will talk Season 3 of Daredevil. We'll be launching new panels covering Westworld, Jane the Virgin, The Americans, Riverdale, and The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And because we look back at shows now past, we'll be launching our mega Star Trek retrospective into space, The Final Frontier, in the near future. By the way, did you know that CPU also from time to time goes live? We've been live from bunkers and comedy shows, and we just went live for the third time from Grand Rapids Comic Con. Plus, we're planning more live appearances and other cool stuff. So make sure you like or follow us at our Facebook page, our Twitter at CPU Podcast, our Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite, or subscribe to the blog, our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, our Stitcher Radio channel, or find us on Google Play. In the meantime, if you don't hear a show in this podcast format, fellow panelists and I still write reviews, and we always seek new panelists, so if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello by finding us at any of those outlets I've mentioned. At the very least, stop by and leave us a thumbs up, comment, or review. We like feedback. Just stay off the maca route and out of the Method 1 clinic before you offer such feedback. Sober up already! Today's panel is Around the Water Cooler for part two of our Look Back to Look Forward miniseries devoted entirely to Arrested Development. In today's episode, our panel reviews, reacts to, and recaps the revival season four, which was released in its original form to the Netflix streaming service on May 26, 2013, with 15 episodes originally, which means that it is available to Netflix subscribers exclusively, as it is Netflix-produced original content. Arrested Development, to remind the listener, centers on the Bluth family, a formerly wealthy, habitually dysfunctional family, and the show incorporates handheld camera work, narration, archival photos, and historical footage. Each episode of the season, in the season's original form, occurs over approximately the same stretch of time, but focuses on a different character. Information on events depicted in a given episode is often partial and filled in by later episodes. In October 2014, creator Mitchell Hurwitz announced that a re-edit of Season 4 was being done to tell the story in chronological order. Ron Howard recorded new voiceover material for the recut. On May 1, 2018, Hurwitz announced via Twitter that the chronological re-edit would be released on May 4, 2018. The recut is titled Arrested Development Season 4 Remix, Fateful Consequences, and the new edit shuffles the content from 15 individualized stories into 22 interwoven stories, the length of the original series. Though Season 4 was initially received generally positively, at least by critics, and if not as overwhelmingly positive as the series' initial run, the Season 4 remix, Fateful Consequences, received generally negative reviews from critics. On Rotten Tomatoes, it currently holds an approval rating of 27%, 
with an average score of 5.3 out of 10 based on 11 total reviews. Today our wacky Arrested Development panel, namely Nick, Sarah, Amy, Christian, and Matthew, have returned to the water cooler ready to look forward at new seasons of this revived sitcom as eagerly as Lucille might dive into a bottle of wine. As always, it should be noted that all of our panelists have viewed the entire series to date and may discuss sensitive plot points, sight gags, jokes, and other bits of comedy best enjoyed on a first watch. So for those of you who have not watched Arrested Development and plan to do so at some point, listen at your own risk as there may be major spoilers. Welcome back, panel. How are you? Good. Yeah. Oh, going to be off the hook. Yeah, that was the clink you heard <laughs> earlier. What did you do, panelist Amy? We clinked wine bottles. Yeah, let's do it again just to... There you go, yeah. Classy. She keeps not drinking when we do that, though. I, don't get it. I totally drank. <laughs> <laughs> and she drinks now. <laughs> well, okay, so now, today, we're talking about the much controversial and apparently much maligned season four. Before we do, though, I have to take your temperature related to how you felt about season four, along the standard CPU character question, which changes with each show we do. And guess what? I changed it for season four, somewhat, mostly, a little bit. Which means I'm going to be doing some bad impressions, guys. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! So let's see how you felt about season four, along the newest version of our Arrested Development rating scale. <clears throat> Though it's been at least five years since you blew yourself, you're undeterred by all the possibilities new seasons of the show have to offer. Just like a poorly staged version of an original musical based upon a commercial comic property for which you do not have the rights. You believe that anyone can do anything you tell them to do, and that the show's revival was too long in coming. Huzzah! Like Tobias Fimke, you really feel like this show matured in a convincing way since it was last on the air, though it hasn't lost its youthful appearance. In fact, its overt sexuality pleases you, and you're having the time of your life watching the new season, though you think it would benefit from having a different name, like George Michael... Maharis Bluth, you have an unhealthy love for it, like you have an unhealthy love for your mother. In fact, you're quite a mother boy, though the adult humor fueled by the new home on Netflix perhaps leaves you feeling as if you have become a mother man while watching it. <laughs> Even in your naivete, you can see the flaws of the various characters and family members. You seem to believe that they are no more monstrous than you. Of course, you're a monster! But you ultimately think they mean well, even as you nurse codependence with all of your potential mothers, like Byron Buster Bluth. You like this show. You yearn for people to approve it, like you yearn for your family's approval. Same. You're really most interested in the Job character and his illusions much more than anyone else, though sometimes his exploits make you want to take some forget-me-nows, since he seems to get more in his own way than anything else. Come on! like George Oscar Job Bluth II. You're more interested in this show than you pretend, particularly the fake black storyline, but you're not so interested in the show that watching it interferes with your secret life as a software executive or as an overage high school student, unless watching it will finally get your neglectful parents to notice you, like May Maybe Fumke. You watch it due to a misguided sense of devotion, a need to be in control, and a savior complex. You might be the only level head around you that understands the show for what it is, but sometimes the family really gets to you and you wish that you could finally leave the family and all of its inappropriate humor behind and stop watching, even though the family's dysfunction is ultimately something of a comfort to you in the end. Really, no matter how hard you try, you just keep coming back for more, even though they're all out of the movie, like Michael or Nichol Bluth. You think the show sold out in these new seasons? It's really lost itself and doesn't know who or what it is anymore, like Lindsay or Nellie Blue Fuke. You would watch it, but you got high on maca root and find yourself suffering a hallucinogenic-induced personality crisis. In fact, you don't know if you can make sense of what happened, even if the answer is pretty <clears throat> transparent, like George Oscar Bluth or Oscar George Bluth or... You don't like the show, you don't understand it, and you refuse to answer any questions about it. Wink, I'm doing the wink, the long wink. You would rather drink the day away, but since you're in prison with a potential transfer to alcohol rehab, you wouldn't watch it even if you had no other choice. Like Lucille Bluth, who would like to start? I'll start. Okay. All right. Who are you? Well, I would say... Now, what's your real name? <laughs> okay. <laughs> My real name is Amy. Hi, Amy. Hello. Hi. 
Okay, so the character I most identify with for season four would probably be Lindsay, even though I wanted to say I plan on saying Lucille because I'm drinking wine right now, but I do feel like this show kind of lost itself in season four. I didn't feel like they really sold out, like the description for Lindsay says, but I do feel that they lost itself. So it's kind of a combination between Lindsay and Michael because I really wanted to like it and I kept feeling drawn back to it. Like Michael keeps being drawn back to his family even though he keeps saying, I'm out of here. I've had enough of this family and he keeps coming back to it. So it's a combination between Lindsay and, and Michael. The twins. The twins. That you would like to be twins. <laughs> or they, are they? they? Or are, should they be? They are twins. <laughs> okay. Despite what they anyone else be. says. <laughs> and that's what I say. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, hand. Amy. Thank you. Nick here. Hi, Nick here. I think I... This is really tough. I <laughs> oh, he's got his head in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> so did they. <laughs> Maybe Buster... Just cause the misguided notion of it. It's still a part of Arrested Development. It still feels at times like Arrested Development. It still has these characters that I really enjoy watching. It's just, especially, I enjoy the recut a lot better, but it still doesn't quite hit the first three seasons, which we can talk about more. But I don't know. It's still hard for me to know if it's how much I want to like the show that I feel about it this season. Christian here, kind of between combinations. Well, first let me like, say, welcome back, Nick. And now I'll say, welcome back, Nick. <laughs> Hi, Christian. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of somehow both Lindsay and Buster on this one, because like I want to love it. I do love it in parts, and then other times it's just like no, it's it's lost its step. But ultimately, I keep going back to it. Sorry, like mother. maybe Michael a little bit, because that's part. That was what Amy was saying. I don't no. You have to just pick one. <laughs> Guys. That's Sarah's rule, and nobody else listens well, to her. Well, according to the Sarah I'm rule, always the combination. I will. I will ultimately <laughs> like nostalgia, and I'm just a sucker for the show, so I'll just go with Buster, I guess. Michael. But. What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I tell you what you are. Let him decide, Lucille. Shut up. He keeps saying Buster, and everyone keeps telling him he's wrong. So I don't know. If he knows. It can be Buster, Christian. Thank be you. Buster. Because that's what I was going with. Follow your heart. Okay. Welcome back, Christian. I'm Welcome a monster. <laughs> I. This is Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Hey. I'm. I think I'm a hard Lindsay on this one. Oh. I. I. I agree with Amy that I don't. <laughs> Maybe just record yourself. Play it back. Play it back. You're going to be surprised by some of this Say, phrase. Yes, I, just, I just don't hear it. <laughs> I Yeah, I agree that sold out, I think, is a strong way to put it, but I do feel like it lost its essence, which I'm sure we'll get into. But the whole choppiness, division of the family, like that's where the chemistry was in the first three seasons that everybody in the family was kind of working toward resolving the same issue the same story arc and with everybody going their own way i just feel like it it just definitely did not have the same feeling as the first three for me welcome back matthew thank you i'm sarah hi sarah hi, hi sarah i know i have the one thing rule i'm not gonna break it but i'm gonna tell you when i watched season four i was lucille i hated it i didn't understand it i didn't know what was going on i would have rather been drunk then i watched the recut and i slightly liked it slightly more so then, I was more like a Michael. So I guess that breaks my own rule, but it doesn't. Mm. It's hard it's because... It's a different show. Mm. It is. It is. It was like I watched two different shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have tried to go back and watch, not the recut, the other one again, and I couldn't find it now. Yeah, it's gone. So uh, I, oh, okay. my brain it got very confused about <laughs> what was where and what was... We didn't was know. Where. We were just re-watching yeah. it, and we didn't know we were watching... We were yeah. Like, this isn't right, because we'd only watched the original... Twice. Season four. We did watch it twice. I think we started to watch it when it first came out. We're married, out, by we the way. <laughs> we were so excited. Oh, yeah. 
the day that it dropped, mm -hmm. that we got together with some friends. We got B dubs. Got got some. <laughs> we did, and then we didn't have the right. They're cord. the unofficial non-sponsor now too. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> and then we went. We had to get a special adapter cord, and it was a whole thing. We were all so excited, and then like the four of us just watched in silence. Like, like it, it was horror. good. Was we it did. good? We thought it might be good. I didn't think <laughs> it was wasn't. good, but I didn't want to say because I didn't want to be the idiot that didn't get it. But I was the. I did right. not get it. That's a, a really interesting. You know, emotional response. I think that was the whole cult. You know, so like, I was like, I and I then we got that. home and we watched like two more episodes, and I was like, I don't get it. I don't know, I don't know what's going yeah, on. I, don't, yeah. I was Lucille, and then when we went to rewatch it again, and it was the recut, I was like, Nick, what is this? What was this part? I don't remember this. Yeah. And then we realized what it was, and I liked it slightly better because I could at least follow what was happening. Yeah. But so that was my journey. It was very. Emotional and complicated. Fair enough. Welcome so, back, Sarah. Welcome back. It's really good to be here. <laughs> I feel like I'm in therapy. But... <laughs> well, you might be. Yeah. I may. Well, we'll need it. I know, right? Method one click. Well, yeah. geez. I, well, maybe not. Nick, I might agree with Nick. Anyway, I might be the minority on this panel. My name is Kylie. I'm, of course, participating as well as moderating. When I watched season four in its uncut format, I would have been Buster. Now, it was not as good as the original three seasons, but I didn't react to it as negatively, I think, as the so-called cult apparently has <laughs> overall. I thought they tried something. It didn't quite work, but it still rewarded me for my intelligence in the end. I actually do not like the remix as much because it made the problem longer. <laughs> and it sort of dumbed it down a little bit because it had to keep rehashing the parts that it introduced yes. in the earlier episodes yeah. to make the later episodes work better and it didn't really integrate the cast it just recut the footage so and when i watch the remix and i have watched the remix twice and the original cut season once i would probably be michael after the remix just because yeah, it went. It, it got longer, and it just mm -hmm. to me it drags more than the first version. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's just my. Opinion. The original edit is confusing. The re-edit is sloppy. Yeah, um, that's that. That's legit. I yeah. guess I never saw the original. I only I saw really the, want to rewatch the original, remix. So the way the original, yeah. we'll we'll set this up. To, that's an actually a brilliant segue. So that's mm -hmm. how we all feel after season four. So to kind of set this up. The way it originally was told was that each episode, so like the stuff you see with George and Oscar on the Mexican border, that would be all in one episode. Okay. Lindsay's exploits to India and to after and they come she back. She goes and, and lives house. with the guy the with the guy. emu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the emu, the ostrich, 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 ostrich yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that was yeah, my Marky bad. Bark. That was all in one episode. That would have made way more sense. It well, it, I uh, you would think, and they thought so too. I, I apparently yeah. I, they tried it. It, I thought. it was a little. So one of the things that I don't want to just speak for you, but Nick and I have talked about it a little bit. One of the things we liked about the first three seasons is how they related to each other. Right. Uh -huh. There wasn't a ton of them relating to each other. Right. It maybe popped up in a couple people's story, and but it was really in the first episode when they were all gathered together in the loft after Lucille made off with Queen Mary and she's getting ready to be on trial, her maritime trial. And then at the end at Cinco de Cuatro was when they all came back together yeah. again in the original cut. So if you followed, if you were so desperate for Arrested Development as I was when it was over, you followed every rumor possible. And there was early talks after season three of a movie and they kept talking about it and it was Mitch Hurwitz wrestling with Fox for a long time. And then Enough time had gone by, and this was still before season four, where Fox was saying, yes, you can do a movie, and he said, I can't. I yeah, have to do I have yeah. to do at least, give me 13 episodes to see what each character did, because they're not all together yet. Like, they all went their separate ways. So then when he finally got this, that's what that became. It's a really creative thing to do. Mm -hmm. It was well done, and yet not, I didn't give us what we've been waiting right. for all these years. We wanted the cast together, those characters together, and it was 45 minutes to an hour long episodes, and the first one was George Sr. and with the Maka Root. That was the first episode, right? That was this probably or the second, second or the third. The second one. Yeah, because the Who first one was really the whole family on the Queen Mary, the mm -hmm. whole family in the jail, the whole family in the loft. And you're going an hour without 
Tobias without Buster, with, yes. or maybe a little teeny tiny bit, but not much. And that, even when we got to, I think, our favorite episode, where we finally were feeling more like Arrested Development, was the, was method, the methadone, methadone clinic. clinic. Like, we were laughing out loud multiple times when it started feeling like, it is why I like the re-edit better, is it? tries to trick you a little bit and if you want if it, it gives you what you want if you are willing to take the leap like you said they don't get the characters together but you at least check in with the other characters more it does it it does fill out some of the jokes that i thought well and part of the there. reason why they had to do it the way they did it was because yeah. so much of the cast had conflicts so mm -hmm. Portia yeah, Rossi was, was off doing something jeffrey tambor was starting transparent <laughs> jessica walters doing archer full-time at that point you can tell will arnett the... was on a show will arnett had a show yeah, will arnett i think had two shows they're yeah. trying to he get has project after He's... project after project i get why Sarah they did was it doing movies. I just, movies. Tony Hale was doing Veep. You can tell in the remix, too, because there are some scenes that, it's in certain episodes, where it's very obvious that they green-screened in. And like, like, when Lucille's going through her trial, and... Lucille, too, was on the stand. That was very obviously a green-screen moment. Henry Winkler as Barry Zuckercorn, right? Yeah, yeah. Barry Zuckercorn. Yeah. There were a couple of scenes where you could tell he wasn't really there, and for me, anyway, that was kind of distracting. Mm -hmm. yeah. There but was one so a lot sort of, of challenges for that. technical <laughs> thing. Yeah. That, that, like, everyone else in the circle pretty much has notes in front of them. I don't. The one note that I actually stopped and took <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> was that there is so much ADR in season four. What is that? Which is auto dialogue replacement, where it's just like they have to read lines. They have to edit to, like, an over-the-shoulder shot where you can't see the mouth or something. And then the actor has to come in after the fact and read new lines. There's so much where you can just tell, and like they didn't even do it particularly well. I don't know if that's just an arrest development thing, where just like they're wearing their cheapness on their sleeve, which usually I love. But like, yeah, there's just so much after the fact where they're reading new lines and like writing new scripts constantly to try and fill in all these gaps. It, and it's it was just infuriating. It was to me. when we didn't get the characters together that often the actors weren't even in the same room when yeah. the characters were together yeah. for some yeah. of it. One of the downfalls of season four was how many new side characters and minor characters they had to introduce to make up for the fact that they had all these individual storylines like i want to mm -hmm. see the family interact together i don't care about herbert love i don't care about well i do care about oh my gosh debris debris, debris and tobias <laughs> their whole storyline was awesome yeah, it's a whole fantastic four agree. thing we'll probably yeah. talk more about it but you know Perfecto when they, is a week link for me I, that yeah, was kind I of like <sighs> yeah they the just they had the thing with the entourage job's Entourage people. Mark Jerry, not to be confused away. with the Desperate Housewives producer. It was so confusing. I was like, am I supposed to understand? Yeah, yeah, it was I a, didn't understand. It was a lot Get going it. Right. Yeah. He was just a way old guy hanging out with a bunch of young hipster dudes. And oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember Basically. That. Yeah. It, but it, it, yeah, in the recut, yeah. it's not even that much. There's like maybe two yeah. episodes where it happens, I think. Mm -hmm. Their I character think. profiles of the family just don't really mesh well with all of these new characters that they had to... That they had to introduce. I mean, it was. I love my favorite moments were the ones where they did edit it together, so that you know Tobias and Job were having dinner, eating Parmesan cheese and mustard, and you know that felt more organic, like the old Arrested <laughs> Development. <laughs> right. But more often than not, the individual members of the family were interacting with these new characters, and I just wasn't as invested yeah. in that as I was in the first three yeah. seasons. Yeah. To be fair, I, I even think without the chemistry, some of the actors took a long time if ever to get back into mm -hmm. the group of yes. yeah that's a great that scene. was and, rough. and you can't like if you're not reacting off the same actors you worked with for three years like yeah and it's a, it's a show about a family and the family wasn't like i don't know if michael Sierra can be explained that way but for Oof. a long time watching george michael was like what what and it I was painful overtly sexual or whatever but it just he didn't seem like george michael yeah. he seemed like I, a yeah. creepy person yeah oh, even though i think uh, the re-edit helped mm -hmm. me like his storyline better yeah yeah because the whole fake block thing that was not explained in the first cut and you it, did not know what it's he was explained doing. it's just not meditating it yeah. on like it is in oh, well, I didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of people involved. that had changed from season three to season four, Portia de Rossi and yeah. her face. She had her wig before she yeah. cut her hair. But did anyone else notice that with her face change, she ended up looking 
almost exactly like Sally said. Well, <laughs> she did. <laughs> I know. No, it, I if you look closely at Are her face. Are you sure face, we're not just talking about her aging? <laughs> no, no. If you look closely at her face, she looks almost exactly like Sally said. Well, it's true. Look they, at they her. They can do something <laughs> Okay. I, I feel less bad about my saying dumb people shouldn't watch one through th season one through three. I felt like I was calling other people dumb earlier, okay. which now I don't feel as bad about because. Okay. Of, I, well, I, that was a smart comment. <laughs> I did not like her living on the with the ostrich. Is it an ostrich? Or yeah, ostrich. ostrich. Yeah, I ostrich. 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 Yeah. 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 I didn't yeah. like that. Yeah. Grayer. It was very strange. It's shaped differently. The whole thing went in a weird direction for me, and I didn't care for Michael living with his son in his college dorm. No. Yeah, that was, that was weird. Even if he was destitute. It was. was, was Storyline was depressing. It was very in depressing. In a comedic way. Yeah, that, okay. That <laughs> reminds me of something that I wanted to say in our previous podcast. So when he <laughs> was developing Sudden Valley, he is a very organized type A person. He wouldn't make a development that didn't have roads leading to it. Yeah, how did they yeah, get to it all that time? Because yeah. generally, yeah. one to three is a businessman. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, he he wouldn't have it made was that. Basically that was just to set up a sex offender village. You know that, right? Right, but yeah, <laughs> which he, is pretty funny. <laughs> it, it was funny, but yeah, but he wouldn't have allowed a development to happen that didn't have roads yeah. leading to it. It just it it wasn't a consistent Michael thing right. to happen. Yeah, but he. I'm not defending it, but I think it can be explained in the sense that he's really not. He, he's going into business on his own after all this time. He doesn't get to be president. The Bluth Company is basically non-existent at this point. And so he goes all in. He's left the family. Boom, I'm doing this all by myself. And I think that's kind of the running joke is he needs his family. Now he's doing it all by himself and he's messed up, just like any of the rest of the would. That makes sense. Salute. <laughs> <laughs> Did not like Navy's storyline. No. 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 The whole going back to high school, I just, I can't. Yeah, that's the I perfect. can't. Like that. Perfecto as the, yeah, yeah I was just like, why? Yeah, why, yeah. Why, is, why? The whole thing was confusing and strange and gross, and I, I don't know. Yeah. I wanted better for her. I yeah. actually wanted them to, I don't know. <laughs> It's probably weird I'm going to say this, but now that they're not really cousins, it seemed to me it was the perfect time just to explore for that. Just right. go for it. <laughs> yeah. Get together. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The idea of like wanting better for maybe like, we kind of talked about in the last one where it's just like, she she's kind of a straight man and she kind of, she's a good foil for other characters yeah. and stuff, but like, you do really like her in seasons one through three so yeah in season four we, like you want more yeah i can I she was that. so like, resourceful I wanted more of, yeah she's super smart she like part of the joke of her being a studio exec at 15 was that she was a studio exec at 15 and anybody do but at the same time she was a studio exec at 15 like she can pull off these yeah. schemes that all the quote-unquote adults you know fail miserably it's just like yeah she was a developed character and yeah, she should have had more. Yeah, but then George Michael sent the birthday cards to all the people, so she got fired. So then she was given the Career Killing Lifetime Achievement Award, which is why she lost that job. Right. And her whole motif, again, not defending and not saying it was it went well, but is that she's it didn't trying sit well. it, or that is that she's trying to get noticed by her parents. Yeah, it was true back then. It's true yeah. now. So her new exploits were once she got the Lifetime Achievement Award that killed her movie career. She then went into pumping up fake blog and prostituting her mother. Right. Yeah. Minor detail. <laughs> I just wanted better for her. I yeah. wanted more for her. Yep. And I didn't. And actually, especially in the first cut where, like, each character gets their own episode, mm -hmm. it's still just kind of like, maybe yeah. just wasn't, didn't grow as much as I think we all would have liked. Agreed. I, I, <laughs> I also agree that Lindsay's story, both in the original version and the recut, Lindsay was the groaning, the groan for me. Like, I couldn't mm -hmm. get through. She's not my favorite character anyway. Probably she's my least favorite character over the whole show. So by the time you get to season four, and I feel like they really didn't know what to do with her. Yeah. And I think Portia de Rossi, she had retired from acting by that point. No, she retired after season four. Oh, okay. And then when he announced season five, she agreed to film season five. But she has told Mitchell Horowitz... I'm done. This okay. this has this is it. Right. I this is my swan song. I only know that because I saw it on Ellen. 
I see. That makes sense. Where she probably <laughs> appears a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think the whole storyline of her being adopted at the end of season three is kind of what killed her moving forward. Yeah. For yeah. Me and where does that go? Yeah, because like, I don't think they, they thought through nowhere. where that can go because then yeah. that removes her. I mean, there's one episode later in season four where she meets up with Michael and they're like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. But some of the interactions between Michael and Lindsay in seasons one through three were some of my favorites. So I really mm-hmm. think that they I understand why they threw that that twist in season three because they didn't think they were going to be going anymore and had it not gone on that would have been kind of a fun way to end Lindsay's character there but since it did go on I don't think that they figured out ever really what to do with her being an adopted person they had to pay off something they set up without expecting to pay yeah. it off and then yeah. they didn't pay it off it just kind of <laughs> seemed like all the actors didn't really have the same energy like it's almost yeah. like they didn't really want to do it but they did it because there was so much there was so much desire from the fans yeah. to bring to it back credit. Mm-hmm. to their credit right yeah, yeah. but I like you know Job's character just didn't seem to have the same energy to me as he did in seasons one through three and I think they wanted to do it but they wanted to and I've listened to all the commentaries from seasons one through three where they all get together what they wanted to do was get back to each together with each other to do mm-hmm. it yeah. and that's not what they did with season mm-hmm. four they they were it was so disjointed and so separate from everything else that it wasn't i think that really did hinder it a lot now conversely i know we're ragging on it a lot but i have to say that buster's storyline throughout season four is still comedic gold i don't even remember you would it. <laughs> he gets no. the giant robotic ham yeah. from Army. The from, from Army. Army. The Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. I love how he refers to Army, by the way. Yes. Like, yeah. just Army. Army loves me. Or Army. Like, it's his Army has surrogate mother. Army as a whole is his new mother. Exactly. <laughs> so there's that. And then he gets adopted by the Love family as Herbert Love's own oh, personal yeah. blindside monster. <laughs> and he makes, <laughs> he makes Ophelia... Herbert's wife, his next surrogate mother, but then Ophelia uses him sexually because Herbert was caught on camera prostituting with Lindsay. Yeah, what's not to love? (laughs) What's not to love? (laughs) And then, you know, that's when he thought he could be a mother man because they they (laughs) got it on, but then she said, no, I'm using you, and he's like, well, you can just be my mother, that's fine, and she said, no, you have to leave. (laughs) Good. I don't remember any of that. I know, I know, but that one didn't stick with me. And he also drinks a lot of juice. And by the end of the season, he suspected of offing Lucille too, because Lucille too is the one who prevented him from going to his mother's trial to stand as her star witness. That's one thing I think the recut does well. I don't remember how the original cut did this, but in terms of setting up the idea that anybody could have killed Lucille too, Lucille too, I think that she's not even dead, is she? We don't know. We don't she's know. We, act, we really don't. Blood, I no, I don't think they found yes. her body. Damn it. Oh. She's missing. She's yeah. missing. Oh. And for all we know, that's juice. Oh, yeah, that could be. <laughs> she slipped and fell on a juice box. But yeah, the, the recut does a good job. And a pretty heavy-handed, but intentionally so, where it's just like, oh, it could, it could be this person. Or it could, it, like, every member of the family has motive. Can we talk about Lucille II's brother? Argyle? <laughs> Played by Tommy Toon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that the only one stoked out of their mind to see Probably. that was Tommy Toon? Yeah. That's, That's kind of your thing. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> We're all nerds. We're... That's just your nerd. I'm a very big nerd about <laughs> Tommy Toon and Broadway. I enjoyed him. I really enjoyed everything Tobias did. His storyline, I think David Cross was that part again. Like, yeah. no time had passed. I loved Maria Bamford in that part. I loved the Debris. method. Yeah, Debris Bardo. I love the, the Methadone Clinic, mm-hmm. the Method One acting <laughs> clinic. There was a lot yeah, in that whole kind of arc for the theater nerds. Mm-hmm. That I, I kept thinking that, they, and they wrote line, all sorts of lines about like, how terrible theater people are. I don't know, my guy. I don't yeah. know my guy. Yes, and. Yes, and. <laughs> right? He's yes, literally and. Like, His guy's yes, not and. <laughs> yes, and. I don't yeah. know my guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's great. And she's very vulnerable and neurotic and wounded mm-hmm. and that one works for me that that's yeah. i'm curious how the fantastic four came the property came into the mix like that just seems like such yeah. a random property for well, them to focus on very well. loved it, does fox still own I arrested think, development now I that it's on t- netflix yeah, 20th century fox because okay. fox owns yeah. fantastic, oh, okay. yeah. fantastic okay. four there, there are a lot of one of the things they're holding on to ruining yeah. a lot of 
crap yeah, from Marvel. Yeah, wasn't the original <laughs> slash Disney? <laughs> didn't the original cut have oh, whatever that software is where people pirate and then you just reverse the frame so YouTube doesn't take it off? Oh, I don't called? know. But like oh, there, oh. there were a lot of anytime they would show old footage from seasons one oh, through yeah, three, yeah, they, have they have a watermark. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> which is just another of those like, cheap too. things that I was love. Was that a joke? I mean, it, accidentally, kind of. I mean, it's a show that's just not afraid to make fun of itself, but right. I think that was just a situation that they kind of had to, show to make fun hand. of. Like I think they legally probably had to do. I don't that. know if they did or didn't. Right. You know, it doesn't really matter because I think it They're was They're probably still like, let's funny. just do that and we don't even yeah. have to consult them. <laughs> yeah. right. Calling the right. attention to the fact that they moved to Netflix. Yeah. But I felt like the remix was really choppy and I love Ron Howard as a narrator, but I felt like each episode had to spend so much time recapping yeah. the other ones. I mean, Agreed. there was at least like a yeah. solid yeah, five minutes true. in each episode of him reminding everybody all of these things and I think that's just because of the individual storylines that they had to do that but that's what made it harder to follow at times. Well mm-hmm. and that on top of I gotta say the whole making the movie and the Imagine Entertainment mm-hmm. storyline was real tedious for me. Mm-hmm. The, yes. the character that grows most in season four is Ron Howard. Yes. <laughs> Without yes. question. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. And his illegitimate daughter. Played right. by his and then sure. his real daughters come in and do season five. Hey, that's, that's she's jumping cool. ahead. Aren't they in season four? <laughs> no, Bryce Dallas so and the other one come in in season five. You see pictures of them in season That's four. That's what yeah. it is. They make references to all sorts of Ron Howard ness. Yeah. Although one of my favorite episodes was the B team when Michael puts together Carl Weathers, the warden, and Andy Richter yes, yeah. to like be his creative incredible. team, and then Ron yeah, Howard's has, like, it's, no. The problem is the first three seasons are so good yeah. that yeah. this when it falls short, it falls far. Well, and yeah. I was only gonna say that. The reason why that was tedious, and then coupled with the remix, is that you got exponential growth in Ron Howard, which I love me some Ron Howard, yeah. but it was almost too much Ron it's, Howard. It's like kind of like mm-hmm. we were saying about Kitty with one through three. It's just like it's good. It's just too much. Yeah, it really overkilled the yeah. joke a little bit. Maybe because he wasn't even in the series until the very last cameo of the episode, and now it was like, oh, now he's all over. He's this, yeah. yeah. As mugs up, but he was as a, is Brian Grazer's. But there, yeah, yeah. And Brian Grazer does not work as well as Brian Howard. I don't think on camera. Yeah, on camera especially. <laughs> yeah, but there was at least in the first three seasons references. It wasn't just yeah. oh, we knew Ron Howard was her- narrating. Within Arrested Development, it was also Ron Howard. Plus, it's Ron really hard stuff. to believe that Opie has an illegitimate daughter. I'm sorry. It's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Slash Richie Cunningham. <laughs> He's not those people, currently. Well, he makes reference to them a million yeah. times on this show. It's a confusing fourth wall situation. <laughs> I will say one of the things that I thought was great was Kristen Wiig as Lucy. Yes. Yes, and Seth oh, Rogen yeah. as young George yeah. Sr. I don't think yeah, he was as was good, but yeah, like yeah. I did wish there was more of yeah. that. If yeah. they're going to do Tracy. it, they should have done more of that. And I don't know who the actor was who did a young Barry Zuckercorn. But it's his actual son. That was his actual son. Oh, yeah, totally makes sense because he like that he casting was spot like on. He looked yeah. a lot like him. Mannerisms were the same. I can't remember his first name, but that is Henry Juniors. Son. Juniors. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ar- Ar- Arthur. Hey. Fonzini. <laughs> yeah, it was Maria Thayer that played the wife, played Tracy. In the fourth season? Yeah, it's just in a flashback. Um, it's real quick. I'm trying to I, don't I remember that it happened, but I don't remember it. I so. liked the studio offices where Bruckheimer had the, what was it, the Titanic? He had the, the Pirates of the Caribbean Pirates ship. Of the Caribbean. Oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. The Jolly <laughs> And then the... Different ending. <laughs> Same thing, different ending. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then... <laughs> Never let go of Jack Sparrow. My heart will not go on for that comparison. (laughs) But whatever. Just speaking about the movie studios, like, we we talked in the last podcast how Kitty wasn't really a favorite character, and I feel like they tried to shoehorn in some of the older minor characters yes. just for the sake of bringing them back but like kitty didn't need to be there right at all like she could have no. just gone away after season three agreed yeah although i did appreciate the one-off of jean jean parmesan because mm-hmm. Jean! Jeez! it's always worth her reaction at the right. very least yeah, yeah. It was actually, I, I was snickering at something when you were saying when the re-release, re-edit was, was released on Quattro de Cinco. <laughs> like, yes. I'd forgotten that. I remember when it happened and giggling, and then I giggled again when you mentioned it. Of course, it the like, actual joke is we're good. saying five of four, when right. it's really 
This should be Quattro de Mayo. Habla <laughs> 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 Espanol. Yeah. That is something we would screw up yeah. as Americans. Well, though. the Blues invented that holiday to get back at yes. them, you know, because mm-hmm. they're racist. Henry <laughs> Winkler's son is named Max. There you go. Felt like he might listen, so I want to right. give him. Hi, Max. Hi, Max. Hello, Max. 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 We appreciated we your friends. performance. We did appreciate it. You did a great job channeling your father. I think in terms of character growth, Lucille, I would say, probably had the most, because at the end... Next to Ron Howard. When, yeah, when Tobias <laughs> is actually giving her, like, at Cinco de Cuatro, the whole spiel about you're the invisible girl, even though Tobias was trying to get him to fill in for Debris as the invisible girl, but <laughs> she just realized that she does play the villain and she doesn't need to, and I thought, a moment, yeah. I thought that was kind of a good full circle thing for her, since they, you know, spent the whole time in the end of season three saying she was the mastermind, she's the villain. And they open it up with her as the Grinch. Like, that is what they're doing. Yes, That was great. Well, and that's why I liked the... You your thing about the name taggy thing. (laughs) Oh, yeah, there's a thing about the name taggy thing. It's one of my favorite Easter eggs. Prison number. Prison number. (laughs) (laughs) I said that earlier. Go listen to the other one. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe you should say it in case I cut it. (laughs) (laughs) Why ever would you cut my rambling from... <laughs> uh, hey, it's appropriate. We're making callbacks to another earlier episode. It's true. It's a running gag. Hey. So I was going to say, though, that that's what I liked about the original version of season four better is that by the time you hit the Cinco de Cuatro episodes, I don't right. remember if it was one or two, it all came together and it made sense and it paid off in yeah. a really, really good way, which I feel by and the an time... And in an intentional way. And in an intentional way. Yeah. And in the remix, by the time you hit it, you're like, oh my god, is this done yet? You like, keep hitting it. It, <laughs> so, it happens like every third episode. Pretty the, much. The actual... Because yeah, the just, timeline is so messy. It's messy, and then you do. You get all of the rehashed narration, and by that time you're like, okay, we know what happens, Ron mm-hmm. Hour. Just get to the point, get to the yeah. point, get to the point. Yeah, yeah I, I had never knew what year it was or anything. I was very confused. That's a pretty valid point, yeah, because yeah. the timeline of real life that they try to then shoehorn into the timeline of the show gets, yeah. So let me ask you a couple of questions. So there is a great big plot point revolving in the George Sr. Oscar Bluth slash Lucille storylines about (gasps) erecting a border wall on land that's actually owned by Mexico, but they think they own it and are going to sell it to the United States until they realize they don't. They're still going to sell it to the United States because that's just what they do. What a comical, far-fetched idea. (laughs) (laughs) How farcical that world sounds. (laughs) And all based on the fact that Buster drew the map wrong. So... He's not good with maps. He's not good with maps <laughs> despite his cartography Cart. degree. <laughs> $80,000. That's right. So they're building a border wall. How prescient do you think yeah. that is? And do you think anybody in this administration is an Arrested Development fan? Uh, they're they're no. smart no. enough. No. Because well, by the time <laughs> season four came out, it was such a joke that just candidates would talk about it. It's not, it hasn't become what it is now. Something that shuts the government down. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, where but do you administ- want us to go with this? But the, administration, <laughs> the administration itself is a joke, you know? And I don't say that as a just shallow pejorative way. Like, we, it's a reality TV thing that turned into just reality. I think it was yeah. low-hanging fruit for them because at the time it just seemed like such an outlandish idea and the Bluths just are, especially George Sr. and Lucille, are such outlandish characters who are always trying to make a buck. I just think that that was an easy plot point for them to incorporate into this. And it was relevant to try to get new viewers interested in the show. It's retroactively low. And it ties yeah. in yeah. George's yeah. light. Because tr- like this came over. out in 2013. Yeah. It right. Was three years before anybody announced their mm-hmm. candidacy. candidacy. Anybody. Anybody. We're not trying to be political. This is an actual. This kind of boggled my mind, especially when I yeah. rewatched it. Rewatching the reality. I was like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> that's the same thing that when you're talking, where you're talking about like the timelines and the real life timelines leading into the show timelines, and it's just like, hey, "Wait, this happened when?" Oh yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So I'm just them. waiting for a real someone in real life to be driving around a circular wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the wall, it's going great. (laughs) This was one of the most confusing parts for me when I watched the first cut of it, because that episode with George 
senior in the desert was probably my least favorite. I couldn't follow what was happening. There was Sweat the one girl only the... did the sub talked in subtitles. Heart Which fire. Mm -hmm. She was on twenty four. She's amazing. Well, I can't think of her name. Mary. Mary Lynn Roscoe. Yeah. Yes, and Isn't I she love. Unarrested? She's Gail the Snail on Arrested Development. I, you got I adore her. her. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's like, I didn't, I don't know. She did what? She played a character that they kept throwing salt on. It's just, they hated her so much, they would just throw salt at her. you got to do it. You don't want to salt her. Anyway. <laughs> she, her. she, I adore her, but I didn't understand what was happening. I could not that, I, that is the first example of, we don't have a whole cast in this episode, so let's throw yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. new I was just saying, uh, Roger Sterling on Mad Men. As the, the, the doctor. The doctor. The doctor I can't think of his real who, name. Who does kind of have a fairly significant contribution to the plot in terms of the testosterone estrogen imbalance for, for George Senior, but and the manga route was that your one of the things you were getting at earlier? No, Oscar and related. Speaking of segues, yeah, that is the set. I mean, that's what was happening. Is yeah, I just was, gonna, and then there was the sweat lodge, and was it Oscar? Was it George? I do we care? Were switching. Do we care? Oscar yeah, was sitting problem. in the sweat lodge sweating while George was then walking into the tent to yeah. pump the millionaires for $15,000 yeah. for them. But were they in Mexico just or they accidentally... Well, they didn't know. In fairness, they didn't know if they were in Mexico or not. And then Lindsay's boyfriend was dressed as an ostrich. I don't know. Yeah, that, there was a was lot of things. The, Marky Bark was kind of a hard character to, like, yeah. watch. But he's the son of this one guy who was in one episode up a tree in the thing. Of Ron Howard. Howard. Of Ron Howard. Howard. <laughs> Ron Howard's brother, who appears in all of Ron Howard's projects. It's true story. Watch him. Watch Apollo 13. He's in it. Watch yeah. Flash. He's in it. It's like also in several Hall. episodes of Star Trek, a series that CPU will be launching. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick's not excited Plug. at all. And he's the voice of the baby elephant in a jungle book there. That's true. The end. There's his whole filmography. Oh, wow. <laughs> every, we got every, we got it all, Clint. I do like Clint. Huff. I adore oh, him. He's a delightful. But it was troll. such a small character that they called back to, and yeah. then they yeah. have a son, and it was. I just was confused, guys. Yeah. Speaking of confusion, one of the plot points is that while maybe is in high school over age, she thinks she's sleeping with Perfecto, an underage cop, who actually turns out to be seventeen Gross. and has an anti-bullying badge. What's the age of consent in California? I'm asking a legitimate question. <laughs> I, I can go. I don't want to Google because then people are gonna don't say Google. They're an unofficial <laughs> non-sponsor. <laughs> it's a show reference. Oh yeah, what do they say? Oh, something I will be the something it? search. Yeah, that's an arrest development. They just say it'll do a something search. Oh, okay. They they blur it out. Google. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I gotta believe seventeen probably is the age of consent. But and yet know. they're nailing her as a sex offender by the end of the season, just like her dad. I don't care for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But it might bring all the family together in right. the sex offender village. It might. Which that is, be, by the you way, you may have just called a great ending for the well, second half of season five. We haven't. Doesn't she yet. mention at some point? Great, now I gotta buy a house. Oh, it's 18. Yes, actually, you're right. She does. Oh, yes. Yeah, she Ew, talks about... Ew, gross. It's 16 in Michigan. Duh. I mean, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Not that she's something search. I Wikipedia. That's safer. Yeah, Wikipedia. That's gross. Well, I oh, guess she is a sex offender then. And Wikipedia. <laughs> 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 Write your own answer. <laughs> so somebody just may have written, yeah, that's written their own answer. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not... This is the map that came up. I don't know. Okay. What did you just say? In Wikipedia, you can write your own answer. Oh, yeah, that's true. Necessarily and that's true, but it is citing the laws. I'm going to believe this. Yeah, and there's a map. I choose to believe it. Unlike the twins, not twins thing. Right. That, that's <laughs> kind of optional with being I didn't pretty write reliable that. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Well, we've established that maybe is, in fact, a sex offender. Good. Yeah, which I hate. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. I hate the Tobiases. Yeah. Tobias actually shouldn't have been. Hey, he just yes. walked and into the house. Right. <laughs> oh, and that yeah. it, it annoyed me. It that'd be the easiest thing to... Of all the charges that have been levied against the Booth family over the years, that'd be the easiest one to get off. Yeah, I don't understand <laughs> yeah. why he ended up where he ended up. Yeah. Yeah. He did ask for a little girl to help get his rocks off, but... But he meant his I, costume. <laughs> but pretty literally. I know. Oh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <a> <laughs> <license infringement. laughs> Copyright. Rock monster. <laughs> Rock monster. <laughs> Rock monster. <laughs> also, I want to point out that in the sex offender village, most of the residents are our former Bluth employees. I uh, noticed yes, that. Yeah. They brought Tom back. Mm -hmm. She blew them all away. She did. 
So, you kind of already hinted around it, but let me ask the, the question directly. How do you feel about this revival series within the context of the original three seasons? Does it hold up? No. <laughs> uh, it's not as good. Does it hold up is kind of a different question, I think. But You can answer it however yeah. you want, Christian. They had to do something different. Like, we all, I think, can concede that. Not just for scheduling reasons. Like, after that many years off, you have to come out leading with a different foot. It was a misstep with the different foot they went I with. I think they could have taken some more time with editing... And maybe it could have been a cleaner final product. Yeah, I, I think they did the best they could with editing. Yeah. I think they that was the footage they had with the actors they had. Yeah. I, maybe they could they, have worked with schedules a little bit better. Yeah. They did know, I, know. I think one thing that yeah, I, I think they could kind of be credit, <laughs> credited with, they did know that it was going to be a binge format now, that people could watch it straight through and maybe have a better chance of catching things. I suppose what we kind of said might have been their downfall for one through three on traditional television, but yeah, it still just doesn't work. Even if you binge it, it doesn't it feels you, work. The, the recut is harder to re to binge. Yes. I would agree. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's it takes a re the, it doesn't the, reward you for it does binging. not reward you. It's when just, I watched it's redundant it, at that point. Yeah, that's yes. It's so redundant. The second <laughs> I watched it a second time to prepare for my moderation duties for this podcast series <laughs> and it was really hard to get through. Like, I had to will myself to get through that second feeling of... Will are not yourself. <laughs> yep. I mean, but I still I do that, have my course, secret He does him. take his shirt off a lot more in this season. And <laughs> Come on! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I didn't want to binge the original edit either. Because yeah. of how it was done, I felt like that was a good time to take a break. An episode ended, and we're going to mm -hmm. reset and meet, see what Lindsay did, and then see what that character did. It just doesn't... It's uh, Arrested Development adjacent. It's not... Yeah, um, side quest. <laughs> Arrested <laughs> Development side quest. Oh, yeah. And I... What sucks is... And we all demanded it, and they were like, well, we better... They did, did what they could under the circumstances. I don't know if yeah. they could have done it better unless they waited longer, and the longer they waited, the harder it would have been anyway. So in they were ways. really... It would have been harder in different ways. It would have, they, they were yeah. stuck between Iraq. Would you rather Iraq. have this or nothing? <laughs> stuck that's, between I Iraq. And that's a tough... Yes. And tough. frankly, I would rather have this. And if we're going to put it to that question, I would rather have this than nothing. Because of, yeah, I, I think I lean that way too, because if I had nothing, I would still be wanting it to come back. Well, and I still enjoy the characters individually. I'm telling you, some of, there are moments, yeah. we've all mm -hmm. talked about the moments, yes. there are moments in the season. It's not like it's a complete waste of your life to watch it, and at least sure. you know you don't like it as much. But I think when the first three are so good and you're holding yeah. this up to it, it just it doesn't compare because yeah. of all the reasons you stated. Mm -hmm. Brought the room down. I do think the next time <laughs> that I go to watch Arrested Development, I might just stop at three. And then maybe down the line, if I rewatch again, I'll go past it. Depends on how season five turns out as another aspect because it's hard for me to skip any episodes of any show when I'm watching things. Yeah but I can stop at season three pretty easily. That's a brilliant segue. Arrested Development was renewed for a fifth season, eight episodes of which were released. Part two contains another eight episodes, but no release date has yet been set. Still? Have, still. Have you watched the first eight? What questions do you have going forward? What predictions do you wish to make without spoiling those eight episodes? Because that'll be part of our third. I think I did watch them because I already... We, wa we watched the first half of season five. Yeah, I don't remember. It was a while ago. I gotta watch it again. I don't, I don't remember it. I actually just finished I last night the first half of season five. I, I think, I've been thinking this. I liked season five mm -hmm. much better than season four. Yeah, same. Like, they you. redeemed same. themselves. Same. Same. <laughs> same. Yeah. Same. 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 Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I think the big question is who murdered Lucille? Too. Or did anyone? Or did anyone? Was it a juice box? I think she's probably dead, my guess, is because the stuff Liza is in in season four, you can see that she has been aged. She's the one you can see she's aging the most because she's the oldest, really. So I don't think. She's in her 80s. Yeah, so I, I, I don't think she. I don't think we'll see much, if any, of her. So they might as well have her be killed and off, whether it's murder or she yeah. died. And they're bringing in the Sitwell so much more, who've kind of historically been the antagonist family. Look at Sally compared to Lindsay, I'm just saying. No, you're, you're not <laughs> Look completely at off face. Off face. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Face off. <laughs> face black. 
Oh. Fake black. Fake black. Yeah. Scene. <laughs> because I have a per- what is impeccable this sense of time. That's I think. it. <laughs> impeccable internal sense of timing. I do love. Wait, is this season five or season four? I don't remember, but like Buster dancing to fake block when he season four season, is it season, yeah, four? season four okay he does it in the security <laughs> office <laughs> <laughs> I, that is funny. that is a great little buster very buster-esque scene yeah. i, I can't get enough of buster person <laughs> i enjoy all this stuff i'm just saying okay <laughs> <laughs> Kill the room again. So the future of the show is deeply in question not only are the netflix seasons less acclaimed by both critics and fans but now we have a new wrinkle Jeffrey Tambor was also fired from Transparent after sexual misconduct allegations during the height of Me Too. After which, Jessica Walter, and I don't know if you've read this interview, it is still on the web, in New York Times, they were interviewing the cast about the upcoming fifth season. It came out two weeks before the fifth season dropped. And she reveals that in that article or in that interview that there was an incident on the set of Arrested Development where Jeffrey Tambor mostly basically had a bad temper, intimidated her, threatened her. She'd never felt that way before. David Cross and Jason Bateman later apologized publicly after they tried to come to Tambor's defense in that interview. I highly recommend you read it. It's awkward at times. They they did it, mm. you know, the quote way where they recorded it and then just, mm. here's the question, here's the answer. So do you have any thoughts about this controversy and how it affects or may very well kill the future of the show? I didn't read it. Yeah. I didn't read the article, but yeah. You know. I heard about it, but I don't. I don't, I can't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't read it. I really, I didn't even hear about it until I read Jason Bateman's apology for coming to Jeffrey Tambor's defense the way he did. I think I, it, it will affect. It, it'll affect the rest of development. I don't know if Jeffrey Tambor will be working again, and if. If you combine that with Portia not coming back, she Tambor, certainly doesn't want to. Like you yeah, said, uh-huh. she said she will, but she doesn't seem to want to. No, she said she wasn't going to come after back for season after five, season five. She said she won't. So we know oh, we're not even five. finishing season five. No, she no, finished, she finished it. That. It's done. They're just holding on to it for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, they have the eight episodes. So oh, just they're in the can. Oh, they're okay. in the can. Yeah. I don't really? know why they're not out yet. I feel huh. like I don't. I don't blame them for coming to his defense because I think they were probably just surprised and shocked, and I think that that's your instinct is to defend people you work with. I'm glad they later apologized because I think they realized that they need to support women and if she felt threatened, the right thing to do is to support her. So I don't And like I said, if you listen to those commentaries, they really it seems like they've known each other forever, that yeah. group of people. And I don't know if They're the whole like a family. Yeah, I don't know if the you, whole cast is there, but I know Jessica Walters, Will Arnett, and Jason Bateman are there and, and a couple of the other ones. And they just really do seem to get along really well and yeah. really love each other. I find it really sad, the idea that people should feel so immediately compelled to apologizing for defending someone they love. Even just on a professional level. Maybe love is too strong a word, whatever. But it's just like... It's, they, really, it's really hard like, because we're in the age where everything you say is forever there. And gets set on fire, depending on the timing. The like, time, absolutely. Just your and everyone gets to assume they're the intent behind what they're saying. Yeah. And cur- culturally, we have such a lower tolerance for this kind of thing that, you know... If, if you're not if, with a hashtag, you're against it. Yeah, basically. and if, if they... <laughs> if choices, decisions are made to remove him either completely or somewhat from the rest of season five, maybe that's why it's taking so long, because they're re-editing and, uh, it with him out of I it or something. Not. I think that would just be because of the noise that's being made around that, not so much that, like, the cast themselves have any, you know, bad blood against him or something like that, so we'll see. I haven't read the interview either, but... I haven't either, but I I didn't even get... I got the impression that everything that you said said is true, but I also got the impression that Jessica Walters didn't... wouldn't necessarily not work with him again either. That's what she says in the interview. Yeah. Yes, okay. I thought I remembered getting that impression or she actually The only reason it. it really continued is because after Jason Bateman and David Cross does throw some comments in there as well comes to Tambor's defense, the internet jumped all over Jason Bateman right. and David Cross. Because that's what crap. the internet does right now. Right. You know, we just And so jump it kinda it. continued, but Jessica Walter did come out and say it's not like I wouldn't work with him again. That was in the Which past. Is a pretty big thing and yeah. I to think- say. Yes. And I think I think there was a lot of confusion about the people who were enraged 
combining the other ele the transparent allegations, which I think were worse. They were. They mm -hmm. were more sexual, whereas this one was more of mm -hmm. an outburst of sorts. Mm -hmm. So I think they, that some of the response was confusing, confusing for some people. Back to your original question. I, I even without this, I don't I don't know if I don't know if Arrested Development has found itself in the fifth season yet. I like it more than season four so far of what we've watched, of what these the episodes we've gotten. But it might because season four is such a not quite what we wanted. I would be a lot more okay with season five being the last season anyway compared yeah. to when it ended in season three. I yeah. feel like we're to me, if especially if they've already got the rest of what will probably be the rest of the existence of the show, they've already got a shot, what the cult is owed is the best version they can give us, regardless of politics, period. Again, I, I don't want to sound insensitive yeah. to the politics, because it's, it's obviously an incredibly sensitive and important issue that's overdue, but if they've got it in the can, if they've shot it, they've got some sort of edit through line in mind, give us that because i think they already had a sense that that would there was a good chance that would be it years ago that they wouldn't make it past season five so like they've probably got a better handle on wrapping up the show than they did before so it's just like wrap it up the way you were gonna wrap it up and i think that's i think that's what we deserve <laughs> after waiting around this long it's and just so what the show deserves because it was such a great show like give us the best version you can go out with on, all of these no matter what allegations that come out and People are getting fired from the show, which is a, in a very appropriate response. But it's hard for the other people that were involved in the show, who now will not be getting royalties for the work that they've done. This is a terribly clumsy example, but the Cosby show doesn't air. Bill mm -hmm. Cosby was convicted of some terrible, terrible crimes. However, there are some people that now aren't getting royalties. Yeah. Jeffrey Owen, yeah. who is working at Trader Joe, who is amazing. And it, it sucks because you want to respect the victims and you want to hear their story and really take them authentically. And then you also do feel bad for the people that also worked on the show, poured their heart and soul into it. And it's their livelihood that's also affected. So it's kind of like a really icky issue where nobody really wins, I guess. Like, it doesn't, for me, it's just, it doesn't become a bad show just because bad things bad happen. Bad people were on it. Yeah. It's, it, you know? Yeah. And I, I try not to totally put up any sort of wall between, like, the artist and the art kind of thing, you know. I still, like, some stuff Kanye put out, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's like, Picasso was a total, you know, there's just innumerable examples of horrible mm -hmm. people who made some of the greatest work, you know, in any medium that anybody's ever seen. So it's just like, let, I don't know. I feel like on some level, you have to let the work be itself. I think that... I agree with that standpoint quite a bit. I think all too often, and that's been part of the social media dialogue, is that we're blurring the artist and the person behind the art. Because it's currently popular to right. hyper-politicize mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the public we're court, expected to blur it. The public trial yeah. of anything that happens, it, it's the internet swift, jury. it's swift, it's unforgiving. Yeah. There really isn't a lot of appreciation for gray, for nuance. And, and I think in this situation, there is a lot of gray, and there is a lot of nuance. What happened on Arrested Development wasn't what happened on Transparent, and yet everything is following through from that. What I will say is that if this is somehow, if, if Arrested Development is nixed because of this ongoing controversy, that would ver be very sad. Yeah. I would be much more resigned to the idea, and I actually think this is, potentially true that Arrested Development in some ways has kind of actually run its course. Mm -hmm. They've kind of run through the things that maybe they wanted to do or wanted to try. They had to reshuffle their ideas with season four. We kind of get a glimpse of maybe what they were really wanted to go for in season five. I do remember liking these eight episodes better. I just don't remember anything that happens in them. <laughs> I'll have to rewatch it. But I do think that there is a sense that there's only so much more arrested development we can get. I mean, theoretically, they could come up with new situations for these actors, but they're getting older. Yeah. And it point. just, it almost feels like an exercise in futility after a while anyway. So I just don't want Jeffrey Tambor and or the politics of the culture right now to be the thing that kills the show right. because I think all too often sometimes it's appropriate like in Roseanne's case <laughs> yeah sorry. that's not, that's, that's a wrong. really good example yeah. <laughs> that's a good exa and she put it in print so it's your own fault and it wasn't <laughs> like people were that many people were clamoring for a, another Roseanne 
Roseanne reboot. And yet it was the highest rated show when it came back. Mm. <laughs> and I don't think the so comics is network? doing poorly. No, it's not. Are these they network really shows, like, though? They do are we count, network. Do we count that? They're in the tens of millions of I only of watch that. That's what, I don't know. A few count. network shows that do I well do really well when yeah. they are doing well. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. So there there are examples where I think it's all right. I don't know that this, I don't feel, and I'm not just saying that as a fan of Arrested Development. I feel like this is getting caught up in, in yes. kind of a fervor, if you will, without necessarily being deference to the gray, sort of the things that Sarah mentioned, you know, the, the runoff, the people that could be affected without yeah. that kind of stuff. So this, I know this is a very serious topic about a comedy, but it's a very, it's intimately affecting the comedy we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> we handled it well. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're smart. Sarah. <laughs> it's a good thing this discussion didn't happen on a Facebook thread, are we? Yeah. Oh, don't worry. It'll go out there. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get the faces in the tweets. And if you do, please comment. We, we'd love to talk to you about this, you know. In a nice way. In yeah. a nice way. We're Simple not here way. to, like... But it is great to have these discussions in person for a change, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it imagine. Is. Imagine. Because, you know, people and love each other. hide behind the internet. <laughs> is there anything else you want to say that we haven't said about season four of Arrested Development? You'll notice I don't have a long list of things we haven't mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I know this now, Nick. Because even if there were... Plenty of new things. We just don't like them as much. Aww. Let's be honest. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the million dollar question. Would you recommend Arrested Development Season 4 to others? Yikes. To longtime fans only or to the public at large? Why or why not? I mean, I can't imagine a human who loved the first three seasons of Arrested Development and have a, hasn't heard about it. And I can't right. imagine... Somebody who loved those seasons, have heard about season four, and could keep themselves from watching season four anyway, so I don't think I would need to recommend it to them. And if they were, like, on the fence on the first three seasons, then no, I wouldn't recommend it. I would like, not mm. recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They would also leave my house rapidly. They've, they've probably tried watching it, and they were probably like, Ugh. <laughs> Can that be the tagline for this episode? Yeah. They were probably like, Ugh. I don't care for season four. <laughs> is that how you all feel? I would, re I would, in terms of like, because what I thought Nick was about to say is like, if you'd watch one through three, love one through three, and were on the fence about watching season four. In that case, I would recommend somebody watch it. Just, just watch it. Just get it over with. Yeah, if you don't have like, anything else to do, fine. <laughs> yeah, right. There's so the much TV to watch. Little right. actual things to do. <laughs> let, let alone real life. To live. That's what. And yes. these alleged books people are talking about. Oh, I missed that. The what now? <laughs> I'm actually reading The Shining now. That's enough time. Oh, yeah. It's a good book. It's right there. Are you rereading it? No, I've never read it, and I've never seen the movie, and when there was a power outage for a million days this week, that's what I did. I wrote, read The Shining. But that's for a different podcast, which is not one of ours. <laughs> right. If somebody else starts doing movie podcasts... I mean, it could be a tangent on Castle Rock. Could. Could. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to say about season four? I've said enough. Though. Did you make a huge mistake? No. Okay. I've never they admitted did. to it. I made a huge mistake. <laughs> well, we have no illusions about the season. That's spelled differently. Totally. <laughs> Same. Well, I think we've talked it out real well. Maybe. Yes. 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 Okay, good. <laughs> That's actually the, the fact that we have so much less to say about season four. Is commentary you know? in and like, of itself. There are so few, like, name one quotable moment we'll take from season four. Yes, and. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and. Okay. That's yeah. all I got. All right. <laughs> so, one. So, <laughs> if that's all you got, then what I gotta do is thank Sarah, Nick, Amy, Christian, and Matthew for joining me once again to talk about Arrested Development. But never fear, there is a third part of this catch-up miniseries. Of course, we don't know when we're going to record Someday. that, because it will <laughs> depend upon when Netflix releases these last eight episodes of season five. But until then, i got to do this thing, which goes like this. CPU is produced by Back Pocket Productions, run by yours truly, the Chief Couch Potato, and hails from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Please, if you like what you hear, take the time to rate 
rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or Google Play. That means give us the stars and the comments and the reviews and let us know how we're doing. If we're doing well, if we're doing poorly, we can take it. We might cry if it's the latter, but that's okay. If you have suggestions on shows, we might consider contact us at our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com, via email at couchpotatoesunitepodcast at gmail.com, or via social media, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Though, of course, we had new and old shows to chat about around Watch Your Cooler all the time. In fact, we have several more new episodes coming down the pike, as always. And if you miss old episodes or you want to know what we cover, just find us on the Google. We're Google verified. We're sweet. Until the next time, Arrested <laughs> Development, both original and revival, are only available at our unofficial non-sponsor, Netflix, because we watch too much of their stuff, who is now producing new content for this series exclusively. In the meantime, our Arrested Development panel will next reconvene to discuss Season 5 of the Netflix revival and Part 3 of this Look Back to Look Forward miniseries, following the release of the remaining eight episodes of the season, whenever that might be. So until next time, until next episode, new episodes published every Wednesday. Keep listening, keep watching, stay tuned! Bye! Bye.